Greetings, mother factors. My name is Sam, and today I'm here to talk to you all about the Black Panther. The man, the myth, the legend, the superhero, the film, all of it, actually. Black Panther is an important figure in the history of comic books for a number of reasons, and hey, if you're desperate for the latest about T'Challa and the rest of his Wakandan mates, why not check out my pals at Hybrid Network? They make some great pop culture content, from superheroes to sci-fi and everything geeky in between. Here to tell you more about them are the guys from Hybrid Network themselves. Hey guys, this is Josh from Hybrid Network. We're here to bring you guys the latest news, analysts, podcasts, basically the latest and greatest that we can in pop culture entertainment. So we usually do a few videos a day, just kind of breaking down things going on in the news. You know, we put up some editorials, you have podcasts. So go check it out if you guys like that kind of stuff. Uh, check us out also in the end card above. We'll open up a new tab, give us both some love, and I know Sam has a great video for you guys, so watch this first before you come to us, and hope you guys have a great day. Thanks, guys. But what was Black Panther's original name? To which member of the X-Men was Black Panther once married? And why, oh why, has the joke about Andy Serkis and Martin Freeman being the Tolkien white guys been taken already? I just thought of it and thought it was so clever, but no, it's already on the internet. Well, I'm not bitter, though. Two out of three of this question is going to be answered, so grab some wet food, relax with a few lines of catnip, and prepare to be amazed by 101 facts about Black Panther. Number one. Black Panther is a sadly fictional superhero who appears in comic books created by American comic book publisher Marvel Comics. Capiche? Good. Number two. Black Panther is the creation of writer and editor Stan Lee and writer and artist Jack Kirby. Oh, it rhymes. Both of whom are legends in the comic book industry. Black Panther made his first appearance in July of 1966 in Fantastic Four number 52 during the Silver Age of comic books. Number three. Funnily enough, <laughs> Black Panther wasn't always Black Panther. Jack Kirby's original concept art for the character gave him the name Coal Tiger, which is, well, a bit weird. It sounds like a dollar store ripoff of Black Panther, or Poundland if you're English. Number four. Somewhat understandably, many people assume Black Panther got his name from the Black Panther Party, a radical black power group founded in the late 1960s. However, comic book Black Panther actually predates the Black Panther Party by roughly three months. Number five. However, both Black Panther and the Black Panthers are predated by the World War II Black Panthers, an independent tank battalion of the United States Army. Black soldiers were not allowed to fight alongside white troops at the time, as the American army wasn't fully desegregated until after the war. Ha <laughs> ha, racism. When will you fuck off? Number six. Black Panther was briefly renamed Black Leopard in 1972, in an attempt by Marvel to avoid any controversial association with the aforementioned radical black power group. The name change didn't stick, however, and eventually Black Panther's name was reinstated. Number seven. Black Panther's real identity is T'Challa, leader, protector, and monarch of the, again sadly, fictional African nation of Wakanda. It's probably my favourite fictional African nation, actually. Number 8. Within the Marvel Universe, Wakanda is the most technologically advanced nation on Earth. This is a result of the country's massive stores of the exceedingly rare material known as vibranium, which the country trades at a high price, making it stupidly rich and prosperous. Wakanda is said to be home to around 10,000 tons worth of vibranium. Number 9. If the name vibranium sounds kind of familiar to you, congratulations, you're a nerd! Vibranium has energy manipulating qualities, which happens to be the material from which Captain America's shield is made. Number 10. So how did Wakanda end up with all the vibranium? Well, it turns out, the source of Wakanda's most precious resource is a meteorite that crashed in the middle of the country 10,000 years ago. Basically, they got lucky. It could have landed in Stowe Market, for example, and the people of Stowe Market would be the most technologically advanced people on Earth. Heaven for fed. Number 11. By the way, the name Wakanda is derived from Wakamba, a Bantu ethnic group native to the happily real African nation of Kenya. The Wakamba are also known as the Akamba or Kamba. Number 12. Some very silly people out there assume Black Panther is merely a snappy superhero name like Spider-Man or Daredevil. But the term Black Panther is actually a ceremonial title given to the leader of Wakanda's Panther Clan, and it has to be earned, baby. Don't know why I said baby then, sorry. Number 13. T'Challa acquired many of his superhero abilities by contact with the heart-shaped herb, a special plant native to Wakanda and toxic to those outside the royal storyline. Those deemed worthy of becoming the next Black Panther have the juices of the heart-shaped herb applied to their bodies, which gifts them enhanced speed, endurance, strength, and senses. Number 14. 
The effect of the heart-shaped herb also makes the Chala entirely immune from all known diseases and poisons. Literally every single one. Can't even catch a cold. Number 15. Along with all that good stuff, T'Challa also possesses a genius level intellect, great physical prowess, and advanced martial arts skills, as well as access to various highly advanced technologies and a truly unholy degree of wealth. Number 16. Did I mention that T'Challa is like really smart, like a really stable genius? As it happens, he's not just really smart, he's really, really, really smart. So really, really smart, in fact, that canonically, he's considered one of the eight smartest people in the entire Marvel Universe. Number 17. His advanced noggin helped him to combine science with alchemy, creating a whole new scientific field called shadow physics, which is exactly as not real as it sounds. Number 18. Whenever you see Tony Stark gallivanting around in his high-tech Quinjet, he has Black Panther to thank. The Quinjets were created by neither Stark nor S.H.I.E.L.D. and were, in fact, designed and built by the Wakanda Design Group, which is overseen by T'Challa himself. Number 19. T'Challa's superhero outfit is woven with, you guessed it, vibranium, which makes him an even more effective warrior. His super high-tech panther cosy allows him to scale walls, run on water, and land silently from heights of 15 meters without injury. <laughs> I could do that too. Number 20. His outfit also features a cloak that can be elongated, shortened, or eliminated through the power of thought, and even utilizes advanced light technology to make it appear as regular street clothes, or render its wearer completely invisible. He's like Harry Potter, in a way, but, but just, I mean, so much cooler, I can't even... <laughs> Number 21. The claws on T'Challa's snazzy Black Panther suit are made of an even rarer form of vibranium known as Antarctic Vibranium, found only in, you guessed it, Antarctica. In a process that's not fully understood, this variant on Wakanda's miracle metal weakens the molecular bonds of other metals, allowing it to easily slice through other metals like a hot knife through butter. Or through anything, because hot knives are dangerous, kids. Number 22. <laughs> Early on in Black Panther's history, T'Challa wore a mask that covered up only the top half of his face. I mean, clearly he didn't want to smother his beard game that was going on. Number 23. Did we also mention that T'Challa is almost supernaturally loaded? Ha! You have no idea. Shockingly, unfathomable amounts of money have pulled around Wakanda's monarchy, giving T'Challa a net worth of over $90 trillion, which is almost 20 times the amount of money that actually exists in the real world. It's literally unethical for him to be that wealthy, I'm telling you. Number 24. With all this in mind, you may have noticed that Black Panther is, in many ways, quite similar to DC's Batman. Both were born into wealth and privilege and possessed tragic backstories, leading them to become shadowy forces for good with state-of-the-art attire that helps them fight crime. Number 25. T'Challa also has a particular knack for felling opponents that he really should have no business defeating. Black Panther has laid the smack down on super powerful enemies like Mephisto and Doctor Doom, as well as single-handedly roughing up the Avengers and the Fantastic Four. Yep, he took on entire superhero teams and still came out swinging. T'Challa is not to be best with. Number 26. Black Panther is also well known for his relationship with the Weather Witch herself, Storm, a fellow superhero and member of the X-Men. The two first met when they were children and later became romantically involved, as adults, eventually getting hitched. However, the strain of being superheroes was apparently too much for their relationship to bear and their marriage was annulled several years later. Like if you cry every time. Number 27. Of course, every superhero needs a nemesis and for Black Panther, that nemesis is Ulysses Claw. Claw, who incidentally happens to be the son of a Nazi, so not a great egg, is determined to get his hands on Wakanda's vibranium, making him a neat little allegory for white colonialism. Oh, and Claw, by the way, also killed T'Challa's father, T'Chaka, so understandably, T'Challa is not super happy with Claw, not one bit. That's in the comics, by the way, in the movies I know happen differently. Number 28. Okay, listen up, everyone, okay? Because this one's important. Black Panther's 1966 debut makes him the first ever black superhero in mainstream American comics appearing several years before other African-American superheroes, such as The Falcon, which appeared in 1969, or Luke Cage in 1972. Number 29. In another early story arc, Black Panther travels to the American state of Georgia and beats up a bunch of racist top heads in white robes and coned hoods who aren't specifically named as the Ku Klux Klan, but are totally the Ku Klux Klan. That's right, our guy T'Challa beat up the KKK and we couldn't be prouder. Number 30. Black Panther once travelled to Serpent Valley, an isolated valley somewhere in Africa, where dinosaurs somehow survived in the modern day. Yeah, comics are weird. He then proceeded to beat up a weird t rex s dino by using a palm tree as a slingshot to fire a large boulder at the beastie's head, in frankly a shocking act of animal cruelty towards an exceptionally rare creature unknown to most of the planet. Jeez, T'Challa, what's your issue? Number 31. 
Incidentally, the vibranium Captain America used to create his iconic circular shield was gifted to him by Black Panther himself. In return, Cap gave Black Panther his previous triangular shield as a gesture of goodwill, which he apparently then put in a Wakandan museum. Number 32. Not that he needs them, but Black Panther is protected by a group of fierce bodyguards known as the Dora Milaje, who are an exclusively female unit of elite bodyguards. The Dora Milaje, known for their expert martial arts skills and shaved heads, arrived relatively late in the Black Panther mythology, appearing for the first time in 1998. Nevertheless, they're proven popular, and why wouldn't they be? Look at them. Number 33. Black Panther has served on several Marvel superhero teams, such as the Fantastic Four, and also a member of the Fantastic Force and the Defenders. He was also made an honorary X-Man due to his marriage to Storm. Number 34. Not only that, in 1968, Black Panther journeyed to New York City to join the Avengers in issue number 52 of the main Avengers comic book series. Black Panther then appeared in that series for several years. Number 35. At one point, Black Panther also took over Matthew Michael Murdoch's responsibilities for protecting Hell's Kitchen as Daredevil, where Murdoch decided to take a sabbatical to deal with some personal issues. While in NYC, T'Challa gave himself the name Luke Charles and worked as a teacher. Number 36. Later on, he adopted the name Mr. Okonkwo and became a manager for a restaurant called The Devil's Kitchen in Hell's Kitchen. Nice one, Mr. Okonkwo. Clever, clever marketing. Number 37. But Daredevil wasn't the only one who needed some time out. At one point, T'Challa was forced to step back from his role as Black Panther to recover from serious injuries. During this time, though, the role of the Black Panther and the leadership of Wakanda was transferred to his sister, Shuri. Number 38. In another storyline, the Black Panther identity was taken on by the multiracial New York City police officer named Casper Cole. He started out as an impersonator of Black Panther, but later assumed the name of White Tiger and became an ally to T'Challa. Number 39. Oh, you just said it. At one point, Black Panther travels to Necropolis, the Wakandan city of the dead, where all former Black Panthers had been interred after their deaths. There, he encountered the Panther god Bast, who was so touched by his passion and selflessness, she made him the ruler of Necropolis reigning as the new king of the undead, giving him the power and knowledge of all previous Black Panthers before him. Number 40. Real Marvel fans will be aware of the alternate universe in Marvel Comics called Marvel Zombies, in which pretty much every superhero was transformed into shock horror zombies. Spider-Man, Captain America, even superhero Wolverine was struck down by the zombie scourge. Black Panther, however, was one of the very few to escape it by amputating his own infected limbs. Number 41. Black Panther is also a member of the Illuminati. No, not the secret society that began in 18th century Bavaria. The Illuminati in the Marvel Universe are a top secret group of the world's most intelligent heroes who play a massive role in deciding the fate of the world. No brush, guys, no brush. The meaning of life. T'Challa is also the main funder of the Mutant Sans Frontiers, an organization conceived by the lovable blue furball Beast, which advocates for mutant rights and also finances much of the X-Men's activities. Mutant Sans Frontiers is a pretty obvious nod to Medicine Sans Frontiers, a real organization which carries out humanitarian work in parts of the world that have been severely affected by war or disease. Number 43. Ta-Nehisi Coates, the MacArthur genius and National Book Award winning writer, was invited by Marvel to write an 11 issue series of Black Panther. The first issue was released in April of 2016 and went on to sell over 250,000 physical copies, making it the best selling comic for that month. Number 44. Black Panther is also featured in several Marvel's animated TV shows, such as a 1994 episode of The Fantastic Four, a small cameo in the X-Men during the 90s, and in the far more recent animation, Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, which debuted in 2010. Number 45. Black Panther even had his own primetime cartoon for a time on BET, in which he was voiced by Jaiman Honsu, who you may recognize as Korath from Guardians of the Galaxy. Number 46. Outside of comic books and television, Black Panther has also appeared in numerous video games. T'Challa is available as a playable character in the majority of his video game appearances, such as Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2 or Marvel vs. Capcom 3. He exists solely as a non playable character. Try games like Marvel Avengers Alliance or Marvel Concert of Champions if you really want to play as the world's richest person. Number 47. Black Panther's reputation as a hyper-rich crusader against evil was recognized in 2011, when he was ranked 51st on IGN's Top 100 Comic Book Heroes list. Just missed out on the Top 50. Number 48. As you probably know, old or rare comics can be extremely valuable, and the comic that introduced the world to Black Panther ticks both those boxes. Mint condition Fantastic Four number 52 comics can fetch up to $9,000, but if a copy is sealed and graded, meaning the quality of its physical condition has been assessed, it could be worth double that. Number 49. 
If you're watching this video, you're probably aware that there might be a movie based on Black Panther on its way. But before we get to that, you should probably know that actor Wesley Snipes fought for years to get a Black Panther movie off the ground, with him in the lead role, first announcing his aspirations all the way back in 1992. Ultimately, Marvel, which created Black Panther and the Blade series for which Snipes is famous for, didn't want one actor appearing as both iconic heroes. Number 50 as such, the first live-action portrayal of T'Challa occurred in 2016 in Captain America Civil War, when American actor Chadwick Boseman donned Black Panther's shadowy attire. Number 51 In early 2018, Boseman will reprise the Black Panther role in a solo movie simply titled Black Panther. Marvel Studios has enlisted Ryan Coogler as the film's director, known for his work on biographical drama Fruitvale Station, as well as the critically acclaimed Rocky spin-off Creed. Number 52 Chadwick Boseman, or Chadders as I don't call him, has always been involved in dramatic art, but initially worked behind the scenes as a drama instructor in Harlem, while regularly travelling between New York and LA for acting auditions. Just when Boseman was considering leaving acting behind to focus on writing and stage directing, he landed the lead role of Jackie Robinson in the 2013 biopic 42, launching his career fairly late in the game for an actor. Number 53 for his roles in Civil War and Black Panther, Bozeman created a particular accent for Wakanda that drew inspiration from various areas in Africa. There was a deliberate effort not to recreate speech typical of African royals educated in Europe in order to reject notions of colonialism that would not apply to Wakanda, which, again, is canonically the most loaded nation on the planet. Number 54 that being said, in the comics, the child actually did attend the elite English institution of Oxford University, leaving with a PhD in physics, as you do. Number 55 Black Panther has the conspicuous honour of being Marvel Studios' first film starring a black superhero. That's great! And also depressing that it's taken this long, but still, it's happening! Number 56 Not only that, Kugler will be the first black director to direct a Marvel Studios film. That's also great, and also depressing it's taken this long. Number 57 Black Panther was shot by cinematographer Rachel Morrison, who becomes the first woman to shoot a film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's great, but also, you get the picture here, don't you? Number 58 Kugler convinced Marvel to let him bring his regular collaborators onto the film, allowing him to make Black Panther a real Kugler film. One such collaborator was the aforementioned female woman, Rachel Morrison, as well as composer Ludwig Uransen and production designer Hannah Beechler, all of whom worked with Kugler on Fruitvale Station. Number 59. Much of the fighting of this film, and it looks like there's lots of it, is based on traditional African martial arts, as well as other forms of combat from Asian cultures, such as Judo, Jiu Jitsu, and Pan Jack Salat. Action scenes from Kugler's previous film Creed, as well as the Kingsman films, have also been cited as influences on Black Panther's combat moments. Number 60. Cinematic influences on Black Panther include The Godfather films and James Bond. Characteristic themes from each series can be found in the film, influencing the story directly, with exec producer Nate Moore calling it a big operatic family drama centred on a world of international espionage. Number 61 Kugler also stated that he watched the French film A Prophet for Inspiration, which he names, by the way, as his favourite movie. A Prophet tells the story of an Algerian petty criminal who works hard, pulls himself up by his bootstraps, and eventually becomes an assassin and drug trafficker. Inspirational. <laughs> Number 62 not only that, but the creators of the movie have also cited Tanahisi Coates' Black Panther storyline as a significant influence on the movie's creation. Number 63. Several other actors were also considered for the role of T'Challa, such as Anthony Mackie, Adewale Akinue Agbaje, and Jimon Honsu, all of whom went on to portray other Marvel characters. Mackie starred as Sam Wilson in various Marvel titles, Agbaje was Al Grimm and Curse in Thor The Dark World, and Honsu portrayed Korath in Guardians of the Galaxy, as mentioned earlier. Nintendo 64. Outside of Marvel, Star Wars star and charisma magnet John Boyega was also considered for the role of T'Challa. Ah, no, okay, no. You're not allowed to be a hero in both Star Wars and Marvel. That's not fair. That's crushing too many people's dreams. Nope, no. Nope. Number 65. Celebrated director Ava DuVernay was considered to direct the film and even met with producer Kevin Feige and star Chadwick Boseman. But ultimately, they had differing opinions on what kind of film Black Panther was supposed to be. Number 66. At one point, veteran director John Singleton was also considered to direct a version of the comic, and envisioned Chiwetel Ejiofor as the title character. We of course now see Chiwetel as, you know, Baron Mordo, who's a badass, but, but before that, that was the British guy from Love Actually in Kinky Boots. So, a lot of imagination there. Number 67. Another director, F. Gary Gray, was under consideration too for a period, but withdrew from negotiations when he was selected to direct Universal's The Fate of the Furious. Number 68. Sadly, British writer and director Noel Clarke was rejected by Marvel for the role of writing Black Panther and starring in it as T'Challa. 
Anti-British, isn't it? Uh, assuming, anyway. That's the only reasonable conclusion as far as I can see. Number 69. Vibranium. American actor and model Raw Lieber was considered for the role of Eric Killmonger, but ultimately it went to Michael B. Jordan instead. Number 70. A few years earlier, in 2013, Michael B. Jordan actually auditioned for the role of Sam Wilson, but as mentioned, the role ultimately went to Anthony Mackie. Oh well. Hope he wasn't too upset in a few years between that and being cast in one of the biggest superhero movies ever made. Number 71. The bumpy tribal markings seen on Killmonger's chest and torso are inspired by the scarification traditions of the Mercy and Surma tribes, both native to the East African nation of Ethiopia. Number 72. Killmonger dons a golden version of the Black Panther suit, which appears to be more reminiscent of a leopard than a panther. In the comics, Killmonger owned a leopard named Prey. Of course, this begs the question, who wore it better? Tell us in the comments below if you think T'Challa or Killmonger rocks the vibranium cat suit the best. Number 73. With the casting of Michael B. Jordan as Eric Killmonger, by the way, Eric Killmonger, can you get a more villainous name than that? What was Killgrave taken? Oh yeah, it was taken. Anyway, Black Panther will mark the third collaboration with Ryan Coogler and Michael B. Jordan. The others being Coogler's two previous films, Fruitvale Station and Creed. Number 74. The character of Everett K. Ross, played by Martin Freeman, is apparently inspired by everyone's second or third favorite friends character, Chandler Bing. Marvel and DC Comics writer Christopher Priest created him after watching a particular episode of the show, specifically the seventh episode of the first season, entitled The One with the Blackout. Chandler is trapped in an ATM vestibule with an attractive woman during a power cut. I've literally dreamt up the scenario before with Jennifer Lawrence, and uh, it ends with me getting beaten up for my money stolen. Anyway, despite his best efforts to impress her, he remains the bumbling, clumsy fool we all know and love. Number 75. Black Panther will also be the second collaboration between Martin Freeman and Andy Serkis, who plays Claw. Since the 2012 high fantasy film, The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey. Number 76. In the comics, Claw replaces his arm with a sonic weapon. Fair enough. In the film, though, it's replaced with a piece of advanced Wakandan mining equipment. Since, you know, Ultron kind of yanked it off. Classic Ultron. Number 77. Forrest Whitaker portrays the character of Zuri, a religious and spiritual figure on Wakanda and the keeper of the heart-shaped herb. Kugler has described Zuri as the Wakandan Obi-Wan Kenobi. Number 78. The now Oscar-nominated Daniel Kaluuya, who plays Wakabi, T'Challa's best friend and confidant, has described the movie as Marvel's Game of Thrones, which I'm sure many will agree is a good sign. Number 79. In preparation for her role as Queen Ramonda, Angela Bassett underwent intensive training with Corey Calais, personal trainer to the stars. His clients include John Boyega, American basketball player, Tyreek Evans, and British boxer Tony Bello. Number 80. Black Panther marks Angela Bassett's second comic book outing, having appeared in the 2011 superhero film Green Lantern, <laughs> in the role of government agent Dr. Amanda Waller. I'm sure she doesn't like that film being brought up, though. <laughs> I wouldn't. Number 81. Winston Duke and Lupita Nyong'o, who portray M'Baku and Nakia respectively, happen to have been classmates at Yale. In 2012, they went to see The Avengers together, and were both so awed by it that it left them wondering if they'd ever star in a similar film together. And now look at them. Number 82. T'Challa's father, T'Chaka, is portrayed by John Canny as a man and as a child by Atandwa Kani. In case you missed the shared surname, John and Atandwa Kani are father and son for realsies. Number 83. M'Baku, portrayed by Winston Duke in the movie, is known in the comics by the extremely dated name Man Ape. <laughs> Understandably, the filmmakers decided to change the character's name in the film because, well, it sounds kind of weird, doesn't it? Number 84. American actor Yahya Abdul-Mateen II auditioned for the role of M'Baku, but ultimately lost it out to Duke. Luckily, he's been cast in the upcoming DC film Aquaman, in which he will play the villain Henry Cavill's Mustafa. Oh, no, sorry, that was Justice League. He will play the villain Black Mantra. Number 85. The highly advanced society of Wakanda is largely unknown to outsiders, presenting itself as a fairly normal African country by all appearances. A series of force fields keep Wakanda hidden from the attention of foreign entities who would seek to rob the nation of its wealth and resources. Number 86. Visually, Wakanda is based on a number of waterfall locations from around the world, such as the Iguazu Falls in Argentina and Victoria Falls in Zambia. Number 87. For many of Wakanda's more futuristic visual elements, the filmmakers look to the classic 1982 sci-fi film Blade Runner. We made a video about Blade Runner, actually. Watch it or die. Your choice. No, I'm joking, that's a bit intense, but please watch it. Please. Please. Number 88. 
When creating the stunning clothes and apparel that's worn by the denizens of Wakanda, costume designer Ruth E. Carter looked to the traditional clothing of various African tribes, particularly the Maasai, as well as the Himba, the Dogon, the Basotho, and the Tuareg, which are like totally the best dressed African tribes, so chic, darlings. Number 89. One thing you will see in the film is a lot of people not wearing shoes. Wakanda is a barefoot culture, where apparently almost two thirds of the people forgo shoes. Hashtag free the foot. Number 90. Kugler has compared the variety of vibranium and the fact it exists almost entirely in Wakanda to the real life material coltan, commonly used to manufacture tantalum capacitors found in various electronic products. A huge proportion of the world's coltan is mined in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Number 91. Wakanda was seen in the 2010 film Iron Man 2 as a location on a shield monitor, which pinpoints the country on the borders of Kenya and Ethiopia at Lake Turkana. Number 92. In order to make a movie about a fictional African nation as authentic and respectful as possible, Kugler sought the advice of various experts on African culture and politics to realise Wakanda. They emphasised that African culture is not monolithic, even within individual nations, which is reflected in the film, apparently. Number 93. Black Panther will be premiering across the globe in February 2018, which is the earliest release ever for a Marvel film in terms of in the year, not just in general, but mad. Number 94. As mentioned, the music for Black Panther was created by Swedish composer Ludwig Juransson, also known by his stage name of Ludovin. Not only did Juransson work on Ryan Coogler's previous projects, Fruitvale Station and Creed, he's also worked with Donald Glover on several occasions, collaborating with him on the Childish Gambino album's Camp, Because the Internet and Awaken My Love, which is nominated for a Grammy I hear, so well done, Childish. I mean, Donald. Number 95. In order to form the base for Black Panther's soundtrack, Juransson travelled to the non-fictional African nations of Senegal and South Africa to record local musicians. Number 96. Celebrated American rapper Kendrick Lamar is also producing music for the film's soundtrack. Lamar was personally selected by Ryan Coogler to work on the film. Number 97. Interestingly, Lamar put out a little hint to this before we knew it. In the music video for the song Love, if you look for a split second on the clapperboard, the words B Panther, soundtrack and coming soon can be seen by eagle-eyed viewers. Number 98. Some people have noted possible references in the film's trailer to the classic Disney animation The Lion King, with shots that appear to be reminiscent of the classic scene of Mufasa to his son Simba appearing in the clouds. Number 99. The Lion King is also paralleled by T'Challa cradling his father in his arms in Captain America's Civil War, which is similar to the scene of Mufasa's death, the very mention of which makes me tear up. So let's quickly move on, shall we? Number 100. Number 100. According to various industry estimates, the total budget for Black Panther sits somewhere between $180 million and $200 million. You know how many chicken nuggets you could buy with that kind of money? A lot, I assume. Number 101! The American ticket monitoring service Fandango has reported that Black Panther has set the record for the best ever first day pre-sale ticket figures for a Marvel movie. That's right, Black Panther beats the Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, Ant-Man, I mean, who knew it? Get excited, folks. I sure am. And on that note, I must end the video here. But what would you like to see more of in the future on 101 Facts? Let me know in the comments below. And remember to check out my pals at Hybrid Network. They've got all sorts of geeky things going on over there. All of which is very interesting, very in-depth and dangly. A link for them is in the description and on the screen right now. But there's also another video you might want to check out after you've checked out Hybrid Network, of course. I think you're really going to love it. But anyway, I'll see you next time, other factors. Wakanda forever!